This episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Farwide app, outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. Black bear hunting has always been a big part of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. It's the best way to occupy the spring months. And after a long winter, the spring season is an opportunity to get out of the house and hunt for big bears. So our clients that love to hunt, they gravitate to our spring bear hunting opportunities. We book a lot of clients to Saskatchewan, up in the dense timber forest where we hunt over bait, and our clients always find a lot of bears. You know, mission accomplished up here in Northwest Saskatchewan. I came up here to represent Steve's Outdoor Adventures and find another world-class outfit that we can book our clients on spring bear hunts, and that was definitely accomplished. And in Alberta, the northern forests are another awesome big bear hunt over bait. These two Canadian hunts are our most popular hunting opportunities each spring, greatly in part because it's ideal for archery hunters because you can hunt at a short range over the bait sites uh, it's also a very popular hunt with everybody simply because there's so many bears and it's very rare that one of our clients will come back from Canada without a nice boar. But the biggest bears, genetically, have traditionally been in coastal areas where we hunt along the shorelines from small boats and glass the bears feeding on tidal grasses or up on the logging roads above those shorelines in the timber. My personal biggest bears have been killed in coastal British Columbia, where I shot this big Bruin on the logging roads. I knew he was a nice bear, but his size really grew on me. And my biggest bear ever has come from the Queen Charlotte Islands of British Columbia. A big coastal boar that I actually walked across open shoreline directly at and got a good close-up look at him before I shot him at less than 30 yards. That boar squared nearly eight feet in size and would be mounted on a grizzly form. I think he really surprised us all as far as his true size. I mean, this is a bear that'll square well over seven feet, and he's got a skull that's over 20 inches. Uh, Boone Crockett all the way. Uh, fantastic hair, top to bottom. Little white V in his chest. Uh, he really surprised me at how tough he was at, at about 20 yards, if not a little less. I hit him with that 375, uh, three, 300 grain swift A-frame bullet. Uh, hit him hard, he just took off, he probably ran 50, 75 yards, something like that, back through here before expiring up underneath the tree behind us. Just a fantastic bear. And I've always told anybody who would listen that the biggest bears in North America that you could hunt were on the Queen Charlotte Islands. That is until the hunting was shut down in the Queen Charlotte Islands. And then I deferred to Coastal BC. Coastal BC produces big black bears year after year. Our clients kill some beasts up there. And then I was challenged by one of my viewers. They called me up and said that I was wrong, that the biggest bears in North America that hunters were taking these days were not in BC or Alaska, but rather in North Carolina. Now, I've never thought of North Carolina as being a state that had black bears, much less big black bears. I've never hunted the state of North Carolina. So I argued, and then an invitation was extended to come out and hunt at Lux Farms in Hyde County, North Carolina, and experience the biggest black bear hunting in North America. How could I say no to an invitation like that? Where we are hunting is on a private ranch in Hyde County, coastal North Carolina, on the opposite side of the country from where we live in Oregon. And the hunting season begins in mid-November, which coincides with college basketball season. And I have always been a big Duke basketball and Coach Krzyzewski fan and it's Coach K's last season. And so when an invitation to sit courtside 
at Cameron Indoor Arena and watch a home game was offered and there was no chance that I was gonna turn down seats like that. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Pendleton Ammunition, loading bullets one round at a time. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Bergara Rifles, a passion for precision, every barrel, every rifle. This week, I chose a big caliber rifle for my black bear hunt. These are big boars with thick hides and lots of fat on their bodies. This means the average 7mm or 30 caliber bullet hole isn't gonna be big enough to sustain a blood trail. And honestly, you do not wanna shoot a bear, even fatally, and have them make it out of the field and into the woods. This area is choked with briars and thorns and blackberries, and the only way to get in there is to crawl. And that means that when you come up on that wounded bear, it's gonna be at close quarters, it's gonna be really dangerous, and it's not an ideal place to be. So I brought a rifle that has long been a favorite of mine. It's my custom Bergara rifle chambered in 338 Winchester Magnum. The gun was built with a shorter barrel for quick handling, threaded for fast attachment of our Adventure Hunter compact suppressor, and the rifle was topped with the Burris 3 to 15 Veracity first focal plane rifle scope. And since I wanted to make sure that I had maximum terminal performance, I had the guys in the shop load me up some of our bear hammer using the 250 grain swift A-frames. These bullets are some of the best dangerous game projectiles on the market today. They mushroom up properly and leave death and destruction in their path. If my goal was to hammer that bear before he hit the trees and anchor him on the spot, I figured this combination of suppressed 338 Winchester Magnum loaded with 250 grain swift A-frame bullets flying out of the barrel at a muzzle velocity of 2,600 feet per second and generating a whopping 3,750 foot-pounds of energy would be the perfect setup for this hunt. That is dead center perfect, man. Right where I left the gun when I left home. Just about that far above zero to 100 yards. We dead on out to even 150 maybe. I'm ready to hunt in the morning. I'm excited for this North Carolina black bear. And with that bit of information about my choice of rifle, scope, and ammunition, we can get back to the hunt. This week's Checking Zero was sponsored by the Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammo packages for hunters. Lux Farms is a very small family-owned operation that only takes about six to eight hunters a year. That's it. They focus on taking the biggest, fattest black bears possible, and their guides know what they're doing. Hunters stay at their massive lodge located on the farm, next to a big pond filled with bass, and a short drive to any of the hunting areas. You eat home-cooked meals, work with friendly staff, and I saw everything that you would want to experience in an upscale hunting operation. And after dinner, we went out to use the new Burris handheld thermal optic to scout out some bears in the fields and get a game plan for the next morning. I'm using the BTH-50 handheld thermal optic and we paired it up to an iPhone. This way we could all see what the thermal could see and I could record the video. This new thermal is a tremendous tool that I have used to scout preseason elk, and we recommend it to everyone who hunts or scouting with thermals is legal. We're out here tonight looking for some bears using the new burst thermal. It's kind of an advanced method of scouting you know thermal scopes been around for a long time but burst just came out with the new one this really high quality super high definition 
We're able to see a long ways, up to 1,000, 1,200 yards in some cases out into these big, long cornfields. We're gonna check the feeders, look at all the places where these bears have been hanging out, see if we can't locate a big one. That way we know where to start in the morning. And we head in after scouting with a pretty good idea of where to start the next morning. I we got here tonight, ran the burst thermal, found a couple of different bears at different ends of the field. They're definitely coming out of the woods, feeding, and hopefully we'll catch them before they move out of the cornfield and back into the heavy woods first thing in the morning. It's clear and cold. We just gotta hope it doesn't get super foggy. If it gets real foggy before daylight, you can play heck with trying to find those bears before daylight. This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures has been sponsored by Burris Optics. Find what matters. This segment was sponsored by Marathon Seat Covers and Covercraft, the official vehicle protection sponsor of the Bass Pro Tour. The next morning, we woke up early and left the lodge well before daylight. We parked a long way from the field and hiked in with the wind in our favor. It's about 5.30 here this morning. We've got about a one hour or one mile walk up the road here. They say about six o'clock we can start to see shooting time 6.13. I'm gonna try and catch these bears as they come out of the, the cornfields and working their way back to the woods. Just gotta get lucky, catch them out in the open. The big ones, they move first from what everybody's saying, so we gotta hustle up there in the dark. Hopefully we spot a big one this morning. There was an incredible full moon still high in the sky that lit our surroundings. It was unseasonably warm and a surface fog had started to form on the fields. With the thick fog, we wouldn't be able to see across the fields until it got light and the warmer temperatures meant the bears would likely head for cover earlier than usual. And we needed to be in the right place at the right time. We're just using some technology. We've got the far wide app open. You can see where we're at. Right here, we're looking out on this field. We've got the cut line there. So we're able to see exactly where we are. The lay of the land where the heavy woods blocks are where the fields are at, the escapement pattern, what direction are they gonna go? I like to use advanced mapping technology whenever we can, not just to see where the property boundaries are because we're in the middle of a massive private ranch here, but it shows us where the fields are at, where the timber blocks are at, where all the canals are at. It shows us everything so we can properly see and do things before the sun ever comes up. My guide, Zach Eeks, had to make an educated guess as to where he thought the bears would come out of the field and enter the tree line at dawn. He had been watching one bear in particular, scouting him every day, and because bears are creatures of habit, he was confident that the big Bruin would follow his routine and follow a trail that would come out of the cornfield and right past us.
This segment of Steve's Outdoor Adventures is sponsored by the Far Wide app. Outdoor intelligence in the palm of your hand. This segment is sponsored by Adventure Armory. Rifle, scope, and ammunition packages shipped, ready to shoot. If you'd like to book this week's adventure for yourself, give our office a call. We will gladly take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. The fog was dense. At one point, I thought I could see a black bear moving through the white fluff but then it would disappear. Were my eyes playing tricks on me? I would never know. But when the big Bruin did get close enough to our end of the field and stepped into view, there was no mistaking him. I wanted confirmation, and I asked Zach if he was the big bear that he'd been scouting. A split second later, Zach gave me the green light. The big 338 didn't let me down, and the 250 grain bear hammer did its job. The follow-up shot was just insurance. That happened fast. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't 50 yards, 60 yards maybe. He's fast, he cooked the foam. Oh man. He just there. I was just like, boy, he was like, I see his back coming. Just came out of the fog through the corn. It's like, just get out, come down this, get in front of him, let him come out. We had him here in the corn, but I really wanted him to step in for a nice shot here in the green. That's good, yeah, it's there for a setup. Short. Yeah. Butterball. Butterball, huh? He's got a melon on him, isn't he? Now this happened fast this morning. The bear was coming out of the corn, just appeared out of nowhere in the fog. Yeah, you know, we could have shot him in the field, but man, it was just too perfect to let him come across the brush line, step into the turnips here. 71 yards, we ranged later. We knew it was really short. Just put it right on his shoulder and let him have it. Yeah, you gotta let the big dog eat sometimes. And man, it's the bear that I had hoped to get when I came here to North Carolina. This is one of these big bears. They don't hibernate. They're just eating 12 months out of the year, 52 weeks straight, year after year. They're putting on the feed, and that's why they have these big bellies, just big body weight. And I, personally, I can hardly wait to see what he weighs when we get back, because in my life, I have never weighed a bear before. Everything's been about squares and skulls here. It's about the skulls and the weight. And I'm a, I have a feeling I'm gonna be very impressed with what this bear can weigh. He just got fatter and fatter. So since returning from this hunt, I've been asked the question a number of times by other hunters. So are the bears in North Carolina the biggest in North America? And if so, why are they so big? Great question. And honestly, it's an easy answer. The bears in North Carolina don't hibernate. You take bears that are like here in Oregon or in Alaska, British Columbia, they typically den up sometime in late October or even November, and they don't come out of their den until April, maybe even May, depending on the snowpack in their area. However, because these bears in North Carolina don't spend five or six months of the year in a den hibernating and just burning fat and calories, they're gonna be the biggest bears. They're gonna be the fattest bears anyway. These bears have so much fat content. When we brought my bear in and started skinning it, it had this much fat on its back, all down its side, everywhere. It was incredible how much fat weight this bear had on it, and I shot nowhere near the biggest bear on the farm that week. It was a learning experience for me, and I had never seen anything like it in my life. In fact, I had learned so much on this black bear hunt. This was a completely new and different experience for me. I'd never hunted fall bears in November before. Uh, I'd never hunted mornings, really. Usually bears are an evening game for us. 
I learned so much I could never share it all with you inside of a half hour program. And I wanna thank the guides and staff at Lux Farms for sharing all of their knowledge and information with me. And hopefully one of these days, you guys can join me and we'll go up to Alaska or British Columbia and I'll share my knowledge with you on a new and different location. Now, Steve's Outdoor Adventures has always made black bear hunting a big part of who we are and what we do. We book a lot of spring and now fall black bear hunts for our clients all across North America. And if you'd like to book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime, whether it be a black bear hunt in North Carolina or maybe a spring hunt in Saskatchewan or Alberta, Alaska, BC, or an elk or mule deer hunt, whatever that dream may be, give our office a call. We're always available to take your calls, answer your questions, and help you book the hunting or fishing adventure of a lifetime. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this week's show. But please remember to join us again next week when we bring you another exciting episode of Steve's Outdoor Adventures. If you enjoyed this video, please click like and subscribe to tune in for more Steve's Outdoor Adventures right here on YouTube.